Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel where we talk about skincare, grooming, and sometimes hair, so that sounds like a thing, make sure you are subscribed. Also, come and follow me on Instagram where I post a lot of stuff you're not gonna see here on YouTube. So when someone from the skincare community makes their way onto Harper's Bazaar, it's, it's quite the moment. <laughs> it's quite the celebration. So you know I'm not one for reaction videos, but obviously this is a huge, huge moment for Hiram. I think like you see all these amazing, amazing people in Harper's Bazaar, then to see someone from the skincare community hop from YouTube, onto YouTube, <laughs> onto Harper's Bazaar, I, I feel like it's just a win for everyone um, within our community. I love it and I love our community. I love everyone in it. Also, Hiram never shows us his skincare routine. I'm one of these people that probably post my skincare routine every couple, every few weeks. I should do one, I should do an update, but we never see Hiram. So here's what I think we're gonna see. Obviously we're going to see fragrance-free products. Um, there's definitely gonna be you to the people in there. That's like his brand. <laughs> Not his brand, but like, you know, very eco-friendly stuff, environmentally conscious options. What else? I don't know. I don't know. Gentle products. I think Hiram's very much about being extra gentle and cautious with your skin. And I think especially as a lot of his viewers are younger, especially on TikTok, I think that's an important message to send because when I was younger, I did all types of shit to my skin. So it's nice to have somebody like Hiram. I wish I had somebody like Hiram back in the day when I was doing all this crazy crap to my face to say, look, this is the time to care for your skin as much as possible. So I've watched about uh, uh, like 55 seconds of this and I thought, no shit, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a reaction to this. So let's see. <sighs> okay, I am not a pretty sight when I wash my face. I look like a fish gasping for air or gasping for water. They don't gasp oh. for air, they're underwater. No. Gasping for water. <laughs> <laughs> I think when all of us wash our face, it's not an attractive thing. You know, like in the old Neutrogena ads where they were like, ah, and the water would go everywhere. That never fucking happens. Even if it did, it would be the biggest mess to clean up. And especially in your evening routine, you just don't have time to be doing like mopping the floor. I am so excited to be able to show you my skincare routine because I am usually used to reacting to skincare routines. I'm not used to showing other people my skincare routine. And especially because it's switching so often, I feel like there's no sense of normalcy. But now I'm excited to reveal it to you guys because so many of you have been asking and yeah, this is just gonna be fun. I'm looking forward to it. This is something I must say about like YouTubers when we when we do our skincare routines. People are always like, why do you change products so much? Why aren't you sticking to what works for you? We wouldn't have a skincare channel if we were just using the same five items over and over. But I do know, I, I presume we all kind of have like our basic good products that we always fall back on. But you know, we've got to constantly experiment. So when people are like, what's your newest routine? Um, it's a bit like, well, this is it but I'm not too sure about these products yet, or I'm trying these, I'm not sure what the final outcome of this product is. So I think when we share our routines, we have to be confident that we do really, really like those products and we're not in an experimenting phase or in a trial stage. But what we all do that is important is just remind people that what works for us won't necessarily work for you. Also, I hope that you can appreciate that I'm wearing a robe because it's low key 85 degrees and I'm Ooh. actually pretty hot. But you know what? I wanted to stick with wearing a robe because it's a go to bed with me. I don't get this chance every day. <laughs> Um, you are also joined with me in my room, not my bathroom, because my bathroom is the size of a shoebox, and I figured that you probably don't want to be seeing up my nostrils my entire skincare routine. So we're here instead, so I may have to run in and out to wash my face. <laughs> I'm going to be using in total one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight products with one skincare tool. So nine products all together. I'm really excited. What? I did not expect that. Mmm, cleanse. I've, he'll definitely do a double cleanse. He probably won't do the toner at essence stage. He'll do a serum, maybe like another active. A moisture. Oh yeah, maybe. Oh, I don't know. I expected his routine to be a little bit more minimal um, just because of who who Hiram is, I guess. But I don't know. Let's see. I'm intrigued now and it's tall. I can't think like what tool he would use. Let's, let's continue. I'm excited to go through them because these are some new goodies that I found that I haven't shared with many people. So first thing I do is I use a cleansing balm. I'm specifically using the Then I Met You Living Cleansing oh. Balm. I like this one because, well, I like cleansing balms in general because they're a great way of just dissolving the sunscreen and excess oil and dirt buildup that has accumulated throughout the day. 
off of your skin. Mm. Um, cleansing oils are nice, but sometimes they can be a little bit messy, which is why I like cleansing balms. But typically I don't. I don't like cleansing oils that much. Like I agree of Hiram. They're just like a little bit, they just feel like more effort and they're not always the easiest to get off. Cleansing balms just emulsify so nice, nicely, nice nicely. They emulsify it very, very well, and they could just rinse off the skin super, super easily. So yeah, cleansing oils, I, I'm using less and less. Go for a lot of cleansing balms because they have an ingredient called polyethylene, which is plastic, and I kind of don't want to be putting plastic on my face and having it go down the drain. And this one is polyethylene free, which is why I really like it. So I usually just take a little bit. There's some skincare ASMR. Um, so polyethylene is something that um, yeah, is a plastic, is a plastic. Yeah, and it's in nearly every cleansing balm that you see, obviously apart from this one. Um, what one doesn't contain it? The new Glow Recipe cleansing balm doesn't contain polyethylene either. However, I believe, let me just get the ingredients up. I think they still contain, it's a little bit misleading. Hang on. And I met you cleansing balm ingredients. The, these polyethylene free cleansing balms are a little bit misleading because you do still have polyethylene glycol, PEG20, have PEG8, so there's still some form of plastic in it. So P polyethylene glycol is polyethylene um, and glycol, obviously. <laughs> but when they combine together, they basically become like this, um, like a slimy thick texture that you, you're you gonna find a lot of cleansing balms and a lot of other cleansers and stuff like that. So it really it really does depend. It's I do think though, it's, it's these little, differences that make a big difference. So using less plastic in your cleansing balms, I guess. Opting for reusable wipes instead of face wipes. It's We don't have to be perfect when it comes to being environmentally conscious. It's all these little differences that we're all making that together is going to make such a huge difference. I do wish brands would be a little bit more um, transparent though when it comes to when they say polyethylene free, you think, why is it polyethylene free? Because people don't want to use plastic, but they got polyethylene glycol. So it's a bit like, what, mm, you know? So it's interesting. If you know a little bit more about that, let me know in the comments below. I don't know if like polyethylene glycol is maybe it, it washes away easier, like it disintegrates easier. I don't know, let me know down below because I'm not 100% sure if there's much of a difference between polyethylene glycol and polyethylene. <laughs> this stuff is so hang on sorry so you see that little dip that Hira makes in his cleansing balm I have a real thing about that I have to like um keep it flat the whole time I have this weird thing where I want it to look like it's new at every use so I kind of like scrape it around and make sure the surface is flat you know like when you um have like a lip balm pot and you put your finger in it and you end up just getting this hole in the middle of it I have this weird thing where I always have to try and avoid that like a mango smoothie on the mm. skin. I love applying it because it applies so smoothly and it's formulated with a lot of rich hydrating oils that are really great for nourishing the skin, which I think is awesome because the cleansing system can usually be a little bit stripping to the skin. And a lot of people don't realize that cleansing can be the most damaging part of the skincare routine if we're not careful. And I really like that this one is formulated with so many oils to just really soften and nourish my skin. This cleansing balm is so nice. One thing I struggle with personally with cleansing balm is that, balms is that when you break them down, you still get like lumps of the balm in your hands and it's so annoying. Whereas this one kind of comes like, not pre-melted, but you put it in your palm and it melts away straight away. It's got all those amazing oils in, as Hiram said. Um, and yeah, like he said, a lot of people don't know that the cleansing part of your routine can actually be the most damaging in some cases with the water cleanse. So when your skin is really, really irritated, you can double cleanse with a cleansing balm. So do it to remove your makeup, then cleanse again with the cleansing balm, and it's an absolutely fine cleanse. But yeah, this is a really nice, it's a bit pricey. How much? I can't remember. It's a little bit pricey, but it is really, really nice. It does have fragrance, and anyone who watches my channel knows that I do not like fragrance, but I'm okay with it in a wash-off treatment. So in my wash-off treatments is when I get to splurge. I knew that. I knew he was going to do that. So yeah, fragrance is... We'll talk about fragrance later, because he might talk about more fragrance-free stuff, but me and Hiram have very different opinions on fragrance. Not different opinions, because we both know the facts about fragrance, but we have different kind of like ideas when it comes to fragrance within skincare. Not going too deep into it, the simple fact of the matter is if your skin doesn't like fragrance, don't use it. If your skin's impaired, don't use it. If you don't mind it, carry on using it. 
It's funny because a lot of people like fragrance serves no purpose, but it does. And that's not an opinion. That's a fact in the sense that like it makes money. Like people like fragrance in their skincare officially, according to figures. Um, and it's a sensorial experience. You know, there are other ingredients within skincare that don't serve a purpose for your skin. Um, some of the ingredients just make the product feel nicer on your skin. We don't really need it but we prefer it to like lumpy custard on our face, you know? So it's different. What I like about Hiram's stance on fragrance is that, especially at a younger age, which especially on TikTok, his demographic is, I, I guess is going to be, we're picking up our spots. Like not to be stereotypical, but when I was that age, I was picking up my skin. I had acne, lesions on my face. And that is kind of when you want to avoid using fragrance. And, and nowadays, a lot of um, products targeted at teenagers and preteens especially is heavily fragranced because they're trying to make the product fun. You know, it smells like sugar and I don't know, fucking citrus. I don't know. And what I do like about Hiram's stance on fragrance is that he's just making you aware that it's potentially irritating. And I think it's perfect for the demographic, especially at an age where our skin is going through so, so much, so much. When it comes to fragrance, there are 26 very well known um, allergen fragrances that have to be listed separate to fragrance on the ingredient list. So definitely avoid those if you have very, very irritated skin. If your skin's going through some shit, avoid fragrance. But me and Hiram both know if you like it, use it. If you don't, don't use it. That's like the end kind of story to it. A little bit because it's not going to be in my face very long. It's going to be on there for like a maximum of 30 seconds before I rinse it off. So I'm not really going to see any sensitivities or risks associated with fragrance. I make sure to get on my under eye area so I don't forget there. And just gently working into the skin everywhere. I always used to think cleansing oils and cleansing balms were for people who wore makeup every day, but I actually think they should be used by everyone uh, because sunscreen is a tricky little thing to get off your skin. And especially with the amount of sunscreen I wear, which is, hint, a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot every single day. I'm like anal about making sure I avoid the sun as much as possible. A cleansing balm is definitely smart for me. Yes, one of the most questions I get asked is, do I have to double cleanse if I'm not wearing makeup? And I always say yes, because I just presume, hopefully everyone's wearing sunscreen and reapplying it. If you're not wearing makeup or wearing sunscreen, you don't have to do a double cleanse. It's nice to get the sweat and oils off your face in a certain way. But the idea of the oil cleanse in the double cleanse is to get rid of things that you need oil to break down. So sunscreen, makeup, all that kind of stuff. And then after I make sure I've gotten every part of my skin, I just rinse it off with water and then immediately go in with my cleanser, which I just do all in one swoop. My favorite cleanser, the one that I have to use all the time, otherwise my skin freaks out, is the Use to the People Kale and Green Tea Spinach Cleanser. This one, I don't know why my skin gets so upset every time I discontinue using this for my routine. I'll try to experiment with new cleansers and my skin's like, what the heck, bro? Why did you do that? So this one is a pretty integral part of my routine. I also really like it because I have combination to more oily skin and being that it is summer right now in Hawaii mm. and it's very humid, of course, I tend to be really, really oily. So I need a cleanser that's going to deeply cleanse my skin, get everything out of my pores to make sure that they're not clogged. They're not going to accumulate dead skin cells and dirt over time. And this one does a great job of doing that. But my skin doesn't feel overly stripped afterwards, which is tricky to find because some... I knew I was gonna have you to the people cleanser, obviously. It's like his like trademark product. I think mine is like matcha hemp hydrating cleanser. I agree that I can always stray away from it, but I always come back to it because it's really fucking good. I don't know anything about this cleanser, but I really want it. I don't think it's available in the UK, which bothers me. Hiram did actually send me some samples, but not of the cleanser. So I am dying, dying to try it. Cleansers I find work so well that afterwards my skin is like <laughs> gasping for water. It's like the Sahara Desert again. So I'm gonna rinse off and start applying this. So usually I take about a full pump and it's just gently massage it into my skin. Last time I did this on video, um, my eyes ended up burning so badly because I'm oh. not used to having my eyes open while cleansing my skin and my eyes are very, very, very sensitive. So I'm gonna be very careful, maybe close my eyes for this. I found that sometimes this cleanser can be a little bit too harsh during the winter time because during the winter my, ten my skin tends to dry out a lot more, especially in the cheek area. It gets really, really dry. And anytime I travel to the mainland, whoo, my skin gets so, so, so dry. I actually used to struggle with eczema a lot. Thankfully I don't anymore. I love the way Americans pronounce eczema. And the way Americans pronounce um, integrals as integral. I find it, I, I really like it. I actually just realized he didn't emulsify his cleansing balm, but I think that's on purpose because he's not at a sink. It's impossible, like, 
The behind the scenes of filming a skincare routine is so tough. Unless you have a sink right in front of your camera, it's just so much effort. Like a lot of people was like to me, you didn't do your neck. And it's like, you don't want to see me do my neck on camera. Like when it comes to cleansing and all that kind of stuff, it's just so, it's, there's a lot going on. Hiram knows to emulsify, so he probably just didn't do it because he needs to run back and forth to the sink and I, it would have been hell to film, I'm guessing. Oh, also, I like the way he's going a bit more into depth about his skin type than a lot of like celebrities do. A lot of Harper's Bazaar guests do. Wouldn't expect anything less from Hiram, but it's important to know, like he is that, Skin changes from season to season, from climate to climate. Your routine's gonna change, it has to change. Like sometimes you're gonna have to chop and change your cleansers. Being in a more humid environment, but yeah, this cleanser really only works for when it's particularly humid and my skin is being extra oily. Okay, once I feel that my skin is clean enough, I go over to the bathroom, I'm still not opening oh my, my eyes, and this is gonna be a struggle trying to walk <laughs> to the sink. <laughs> to wash my face off, but you know, I'm gonna do my best. Wish me luck. His laugh makes me laugh so much. When we filmed our collab, like, um, it was a while back actually now, but his laugh is so funny. It's the, the best laugh. Wow, I made it over to the bathroom with my eyes closed and I did not spill on my shirt. Cha cha! <laughs> I don't always win that battle, but today I did, I guess. Woo! It's a good also, day. Also, if you notice that my skin is a little bit red, I have reactive skin. I don't have sensitive skin. My skin can actually handle a lot of products, ingredients, testing, etc., etc., but it is reactive. If the wind mm. blows, my skin's like, pff, inflammation instantly. Next, I go in with a new step that I haven't been using. Very important to note as well, like he just said, like I would apply a product sometimes and my skin would go a little bit red and then calm the fuck down like straight away. I'm swearing way too much in this video. I'm so sorry. There's a difference between, you know, like having an allergic reaction, having irritation, reactive skin as well. So it's important that we all know the difference. Um, so I'm, yeah, glad he's pointing that out for very long. It's the Instreet Green Tea Fresh Ooh. Toner. Now, normally I'm not a big toner person because I don't really feel that they're necessary to a skincare routine, but this product, the first ingredient is green tea extract. The first ingredient. And it's like super affordable. And normally products with that high of a concentration of green tea, heck, even less of a concentration of green tea are super, super expensive. So I was pleasantly surprised to find this. I'm pleasantly surprised that he's using a toner. I did not think... I, did, I didn't think. I didn't think there would be a toner in this routine at all. Hiram does always say how um, toners aren't necessary. Like they're not, they're absolutely not. Um, but they are nice to have. Um, Isn Tree is a brand that like um, I'm from, both Korean brands are known for their high concentration of their key ingredients. So they're a really, really good brand. If you haven't checked them out, check them out already. But yeah, it's probably gonna talk about the ingredients, but green tea, I love green tea. Um, it's great for inflammation, irritation, it's an antioxidant. It's one of the very few great ingredients that has a lot of research as far as um, minimizing the appearance of pores as well. So it's, it's an ingredient I love. And I also don't use a cotton pad. I just put it in my palms and pat it into my skin. You know, it's funny, my nighttime routine was not always this um, complete. I used to be extremely bad at doing a nighttime routine, but once I figured out to put like my nighttime skincare right next to my bed and have a micellar water there to just like do my entire skincare routine while laying down, I slowly started getting into a nighttime skincare routine until, you know, now, which I'm like fully addicted. But for anyone out there who is struggling to keep up with a consistent nighttime routine, I'm always recommending that because it definitely helped my skin. I also really like using the ingredient green tea because it's great for soothing inflammation and redness. It also may have some anti-aging benefits. It's just overall a really good skin healing agent that I really like to use. So after that step, I make sure my skin is completely dry before I go in with the next one. And that's important because the next product I use is from Verst. It's the Press Restart Gentle Retinol Serum. Retinol is one of my favorite ingredients for just repairing so much damage within the skin. It's so well researched. There's so many benefits to it. And I think it's a must, especially considering like how much sun exposure I get here and just the stressors and the fact that I do age so quickly, retinol is a must step in my skincare routine. For a few months I went off of- I, I don't know why, but I'm surprised it's a retinol, but it makes perfect sense. Why would he not use a retinol? <laughs> he knows the benefits of it. Um, Verse, I really want to try out Verse. I've never tried it before retinol and I've been slowly like making my way back into it and this one's a more gentle formula so it's better and more ideal to make sure that like my skin doesn't you know freak out when I start to use it and I've been using it for a couple weeks and so far I've been really enjoying the experience yeah I've been really enjoying retinols in moisturizers and creams with buffers um 
because I, I, I like higher in my go through stages where I use it absolutely fine. Sometimes I get a bit carried away. I'm like, oh my God, I can do three times a week now. And I can't, I really can't. So then that's when I would calm down. I'd use a retinol and like a moisturizer and a cream once a week and slowly build my way back up and promise myself I'm never gonna do it again, but then I do. It's funny though, so many people are like, oh my gosh, you can't use retinol, you're too young to use retinol, et cetera, et cetera. And I think what a lot of people don't realize is that the reason I started my skincare YouTube channel is because of aging that I was seeing in my skin. I had wrinkles all over my face, deep set one on my forehead, underneath my eyes. And before that, I never really thought anything of skincare. I thought it was just something like older ladies used because they wanted to feel fancy. <laughs> <laughs> but as soon as I started using skincare and I started incorporating exfoliants into my skincare routine and retinol, I quickly realized that it was actually effective because the wrinkles in my face were going away. And now, thankfully, I've managed to, you know, keep them at bay for some time. We'll see how long that lasts. I'm very expressive and I'm white, so I age like a raisin. <laughs> so I just took two pumps of that and applied it into oh, my skin. One of the forgot I was filming then. Um, yeah, so retinol, I mean, you don't have to start using retinol when you're like 13, you know? Usually find retinol is though in acne medication, and um, like obviously prescription only kind of stuff, but a lot of people are like, should I be using it in my teens? You don't not use it in your teens, but you don't really have to. I would say like early 20s, go for it once a week. I mean, I'm in my 30s now. I wish I started retinol sooner. I'm quite lucky in the sense that my, I haven't got any wrinkles. I've never had wrinkles. I got like two fine lines on my forehead. Retinol always sounds so daunting um, and scary, but um, yeah, use like one of the creams, like for example, this first one looks really, really interesting. I wanna try it. The reasons I like that one is because retinol typically usually comes in very thick, heavy creams. And I wanna be able to utilize retinol, but also be able to apply other products on top of it afterwards. This one is a must in my mm. skincare routine, the Great Barrier Relief from Crave Beauty. When I first found this, Oh, sorry. So yeah, retinol works best when it's touching your dry skin. So I think the, the stage Hiram used it in is perfect. You don't want to start adding treatments on top. Of, you don't want to start adding treatments onto your skin and moisturizers and then using a retinol unless you're buffering it, which is a good way to introduce retinol is to use as your last step over moisturizer then slowly bring it into um, touching your skin as soon as possible into your routine, if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. I'm not very good at explaining things, but see, he's going to talk about one of my favorite products now. Let's see what he has to say. Didn't, I, was, I was in such a dark place. I don't know where I was before this. This like saved my skin, <laughs> which sounds dramatic, but hello, that's me. <laughs> this one I specifically love because what it focuses on is helping to repair the skin's moisture barrier. And I think what we don't realize is that we tend to just pummel our skin with so many treatments, at least I do. So that sometimes I forget that, you know, the health of the skin is just as important as seeing results. And those mm. two things are not interchangeable. Your skin can be, you know, seeing really good results in terms of like exfoliation and retinol, but not be adequately healthy. And this is a great product for just making sure that my- That's such a good point. That's such a good point. And I've not heard a single person on YouTube say that. Using skincare isn't always about seeing immediate results or trying to get some kind of result. You've got to remember to just constantly care for your skin. And in like this kind of like, I feel like um, Great Barrier Relief is kind of like the serum moisturizer hybrid. And I feel like the serum and the moisturizer is the perfect stage to do this. You can buy moisturizers with nice ceramide rich ingredients, cholesterol, squalane, tamanu oil, all really good at helping keep your skin barrier healthy. So uh, that like Hiram said that perfectly, absolutely perfectly that sometimes we forget to just do the basic care for our skin. And yeah, I'm glad he's reminding everyone. He's reminding me. Moisture barrier is as strong as possible. And when I started using this mm. product, I immediately noticed that the redness in my face was gone. My skin was more hydrated. I didn't need to, you know, uh, worry about as much excessive oiliness throughout the day because it's formulated with niacinamide. It has tamanu oil. So I started noticing like a brightness and getting rid of dark spots and sunspots on my face. Just so many different benefits that I started noticing from this product. So after I apply that product, I go in with a fine- Completely agree. I I don't, I keep talking about this video, but the video I did on where I like basically fucked up my skin on purpose. You can still, still see some redness and irritation on the nose. I'm still got a few breakouts on the forehead. This product is so, so good that I am paying a ridiculous amount of money to get it shipped over from America. They don't deliver to the UK. So I'm having to send it to someone to then send it to me. I've ordered like three of these. This product is so, so good. I have a few great alternatives, 
but there's just something about this product that did so much amazing stuff for my skin barrier that I know that once I get it, the redness on my skin is just gonna calm down so, so much. If you are in, I believe, Singapore, Malaysia, and America, Crave Beauty ship to, if you can get your hands on this, get it. It's honestly like a game changer moisturizer because this alone it, it can be used as a moisturizer but i would say it doesn't have enough inclusive mm. agents to really form the protective seal to prevent me from losing water through my skin overnight if you know that process it's called transepidermal water loss i'm constantly talking about it um, but i just want to always make sure that i have a final seal to prevent any of that water loss but i don't like going in with really heavy creams after doing this many products mm. which is why I have been absolutely loving the Rovectin Clean Water Cream. It comes with little Ooh. stickers that you can put on the bottle, so I customize my own. It's cute. This one I love because it's formulated with a crazy high concentration of lotus, which is great for, you know, reducing sensitivity and irritation in the face and also for, you know, potentially being anti-aging and antioxidant properties. But I specifically love this one because it's a very lightweight water cream. So it absorbs into the skin so quickly and does not feel heavy. Hiram's language when he talks about skincare is spot on. I think a lot of these brands come out with like anti-aging products. No product other than um, retinoids is proven to reverse or halt signs of aging, so wrinkles, fine lines. But brands will come out and say, this is an anti-aging product because it could potentially help towards that. So I'm glad Hiram's saying that these ingredients potentially or have been shown to help with because that's, that's the truth of it. They're not necessarily don't work, but there's just not all that kind of scientific backing behind it. I've actually been really liking using this one during the day because I can ensure that it will not make my skin look really oily or greasy, something that's really important to me, particularly during the summer. I always make sure I apply on the neck. Funny enough, dragging upwards on my neck actually creates a lot of redness and irritation, so I usually Ooh. just pat it into my neck. And what I also do with my moisturizer is I always make sure to pat it into my skin afterwards because I, I don't know why, maybe this is true, maybe it's not true, but I feel like my products absorb so much better once I pat it into my skin. And I don't know if that's because it's actually being absorbed by the skin more or if it's just being absorbed by my fingers more. I have no idea. Let me know down below because I would love to know the you know scientific explanation behind that. So I've talked about this before, but um, kind of Steven on Instagram um, has a post all about tapping versus rubbing skincare into your skin and the conclusion is kind of at the end of the day do what works for your skin. As some of you may notice, most of these products are actually Korean, and that's because I love Korean skincare. I just feel like it encapsulates so much of just the modern, innovative perspective that Korean skincare technology can bring and just incredible ingredients and formulas, just everything that I love about skincare in non-irritating formulas. 100% agree. I love Korean skincare, the innovation. I love the ingredients that some of us have never heard of in skincare before, or used in skincare before, being utilized in these amazing products. Korean skincare for me um, has everything I love about skincare, everything I love amazing packaging, like stories behind the brand, amazing actual products and ingredients. And it just goes to show you that you can have everything in your skincare. One thing that's very prevalent on my channel in terms of messaging is going towards skincare that's not going to irritate your skin, but contribute to the health of your skin. And that's something that I definitely try to focus on within my own skincare routine. You know, sometimes I wish I could just be like a model when I apply my skincare routine, like. You are a model. Model, fashion, model. But no, it's like <laughs> World War Three over here on my face. I've gotten better. I've gotten a lot better. <laughs> I used to be like man handling my face when I applied my skincare routine. Now I'm much more gentle, but that doesn't mean it's beautiful. So I apologize <laughs> to anyone who's watching. <laughs> You're stunning. Yeah, I see all these TikToks of like men were like doing this on their face. I'm like, oh. I, I get that people feel like being rougher means your skincare routine takes less time to do, but you do have to be gentle. Come on. All right, once I pat that into my skin, I go in with lips next because my lips tend to get really dry and I think overnight is a great time for me to just make sure I'm really moisturizing my lips so I don't have to apply a lip balm as much throughout the day. The one that I've been really loving is the Milk Makeup Melatonin Lip Mask. I, I think that. there's a lot of like underrated benefits to melatonin in skincare and I specifically like this one because it's very thick, it's very hydrating and it's gonna make sure that I do not wake up with dry lips. The only thing I don't like about this one is that it is fragrance. formulated with lavender oil. So, you know, to me that I would consider that fragrance, but with lip products, it's so hard to find fragrance free formulas that are actually really effective at, you know, keeping the skin moist overnight. And mm. this one works really well. 
Yeah, um, I love that one. It's very lavender heavy. I don't like the smell of lavender, but I really, really like this lip mask. And like Hiram says, it's so tough to find an actual good hydrating lip product that doesn't have fragrance in. The Dr. Sam um, lip treatment, I, I forgot its name. It's two ingredients non-fragranced um, and, and does an amazing job, an amazing, amazing job. But this Milk Makeup one is so good. I mean, you're all right with fragrance on the lips. You should be absolutely fine. Think of the stuff that passes our lips like on a daily basis. Okay. And then for the final step, I go in with a skincare tool that I actually have not talked about on my channel before. So I'm so excited to provide an exclusive look into my skincare routine. It's actually a cooling globe. Yes. And it would be cooling globes, plural, if I hadn't have broken the other one and it leaked out everywhere oh, no. into my carpet. That's so expensive. It. So love that. <laughs> but, you know, I just have one for now. But it's okay. It's the same tool. It just takes, you know double the time, but it's still so nice. I love using this both at nighttime or in the morning, specifically in the morning on the under eye area because it really de-puffs the face. But overall, I just like it because typically with a lot of these like cooling tools that I've used in the past, sometimes they create such a heavy layer of like condensation on the outside that it almost feels like you're just kind of smothering water all over your face and it feels like it's almost breaking up the skin. I love ice globes. I talked about this in the, the um, I talked about these in the products I keep secret video because I felt like they were a bit too bougie. I get a lot of like warm skin. I got mild rosacea. So this really, really does help kind of like calm that down. And like Hiram said in the morning, it's so nice just to do a quick like little smidge all over the face. So these ones have a liquid in that doesn't freeze over. So they're not just filled with water. And I think that's what a lot of like um, the cheaper alternatives have. So you do get that condensation. Whereas with these tools, they have like a, almost like an antifreeze kind of liquid inside of them. So it doesn't create that condensation and you don't get all that water dripping down your skin formula but this one I never noticed that it really glides across the skin helps to you know further push your skincare products into your skin without like leaving traces of water across the surface of your skin and I always just leave this in the fridge overnight and I always try to move it upwards in a lifting motion because there's really no reason to be dragging downwards like your skin does not like that it does not need more gravitational pull no sir not today <laughs> Oh, normally when I have two, I do it so pretty. I'm not like Mr. Like T-Rex claws trying to push it all over my face. Normally it's very like visually aesthetic, but <laughs> alas, the second one broke. But thankfully these ones are actually really affordable. I got this from Sephora and I think they were like 20 bucks. So not bad. My ones were like a hundred quid. I didn't pay for them to be fair, but um, that's nice to know you can get them cheaper. We stand affordability. <laughs> and I like to go on the neck as well and just push upwards. And this is just such a nice step just to like Ah, <sighs> calm down, you know, focus on just like self-care time. I think sometimes even with me, I tend to be so rushed in my life that I, you know, really rush through my skincare routine and using this is kind of a moment for me to just reflect and, you know, think about the self-care part of skincare and have like a little bit of a meditative moment. That's one thing that like I feel, I feel like there's two sides to like skincare. You have the people that really just see it as something functional. It all should be science, science, science. If it doesn't create amazing differences for your skin, you shouldn't be using it. Whereas you have people like myself who find skincare as a hobby. I literally collect skincare. I enjoy it. It's like me time. I like to take that half hour to an hour in the evening just to like relax and watch whatever I'm going to watch on YouTube and take that time to calm the fuck down before bed and just to really really switch off which is so difficult nowadays and i think more and more people are now they're seeing skincare as a hobby they do create this ritual with their evening routine which i think is so important for everyone i know i'm definitely guilty of looking at skincare from a utility standpoint mm. where i'm like i have this problem how do i fix it let me use that as fast as possible and that's not usually the best way to go about using skincare i think self-care and indulgence and meditation is just as important for a skincare routine as is utility and repairing a problem within the skin. And I think tapping into both of those is where you can really find a passion for skincare. That's definitely what turned it from just an interest into a passion for me. And also just being able to feel so good about yourself once you start seeing good results within your skin, I think is so powerful. And that's one thing on my channel that I think brings me the most joy, true, true joy is seeing how people's skin has improved per recommendation of other creators or me, um, and seeing just the confidence that comes along with 
their skin being glowy, healthy, happy. Oh, it's just, it's so cool to see how much of a positive difference it's made in people's lives. And it's what drives me to keep doing what I do. Yeah, I agree. Like we get sent a lot of pictures of like before and afters as of like, this is what you helped my skin with. You know, we're not dermatologists. We're not here to diagnose people's skin conditions. But when you get sent a picture of a before and after, you're like, oh shit, did I actually help you with that? And it does feel really, really, really good. And it's not the idea of like, you have to be perfect, you have to have perfect skin. No one has perfect skin. Like, like just reinstalling some confidence back in yourself, not coming from having better skin, but understanding your skin and like knowing, working with it rather than thinking it's against you all the time. And just, I guess, connecting with yourself in some way as well, you know? Like when you are doing your routines, you're understanding yourself more, you're understanding your skin more. And, and just, I don't know, take, taking that time for yourself makes you feel better about yourself and just gives you that confidence and not necessarily to do with this how your skin is looking if that makes sense sorry i would say if that makes sense because i'm not sure if i explained stuff very well actually before getting into cosmetics i struggled with a severe eating disorder and it was really difficult to find well i had never had a moment where i looked at myself in the mirror and thought to myself wow i'm beautiful you know and it wasn't until i started using cosmetics that it really unlocked that opportunity for me to see the beauty within myself and it wasn't about the products it wasn't about anything you know material it was just a pathway to be able to open my eyes to my beauty you know that i possess inner and outer and that's one thing I just love about skincare is that I think sometimes it can really be the unnecessary key to unlocking the door of confidence for a lot of people. It's not the confidence itself. It opens up an opportunity for people to be able to see themselves in a better light. And what price can you put on that? You know, once I started recognizing my own beauty, that's when, you know, the recovery became a lot easier, uh, a lot more enjoyable to manage as I slowly got better. And I think everyone deserves to see themselves in that same light. I don't think anyone should be excluded from seeing the beauty within themselves. Wow, we're getting emotional. <laughs> no, not really. Fuck, Hiram. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, it sounds like we agree. <laughs> yeah, this is the thing, it's, it's not just about making your skin perfect, it's about, it's about connecting with yourself and, you know, just taking the time to appreciate yourself and know that you deserve this pampering, know that you deserve this effort that you're putting into your skin, knowing that you're more than just what you are on the outside and how you appear on the outside as well. And I know it sounds super cheesy, but that is what frustrates me about people who are like, just use this product, all you need is that and that. Do you mean like, fine, it works, that skincare is functional, but you can enjoy it. But you know, like Hiram says, like sometimes it's just nice to know that you are worth the effort you're putting into yourself, you know? See, this is why I love this part of the skincare routine. I can just oh, have this reflective, meditative moment. And you guys just got to be with me for that. So, double bonus. All right, and after we finish that, I am finished with my skincare routine. And this is where I pass out, I knock out, I wake up glowy, happy, and hydrated, which is the goal, always. <laughs> but yeah, this was my entire skincare routine, and I hope each of you really enjoyed watching. Uh, I know I definitely had fun, as I usually don't get to, you know, show my own skincare routine. Thank you to all of the people who are watching this, and I can't wait to see if any of you react to my skincare routine and roast me, because I will be looking forward to every shady comment. <laughs> but thank you so much, everyone, and I will see you in the next video. Mwah. Yay! So there we go. It's honestly like such, let me shuffle. It's honestly such like a, a proud moment. I think like, you know, Hiram's channel and his TikTok especially has really taken off and he, he deserves it so, so much. He worked so hard, like so, so hard. You know, as a community, we talk behind the scenes a fair bit. And um, when I saw Hiram's video, I think it was last year, like the Kylie skin video. When I saw him, I was like, there's something different here. I was like, he's gonna become very, very popular. So I, I reached out, not just because of that. But at the time, I mentioned this in a video before, it was so nice to have like another guy talking about skincare in the way that I was, in a way that we enjoy it, like um, we, we're interested in the science behind it. You know, I at that time I was in a space where I was trying to be like this men's grooming expert, which really wasn't me. Um, and I'm slowly shifting out of that. I feel like my channel's changed completely from, you know, three years ago to what it is now. And I'm loving what I'm doing now. And it was so nice to have Hiram there along the way as well. But Hiram, 
honestly, like, just our conversations, I know how hard he works. He works so ridiculously hard, and he really, honestly, does deserve every single subscriber, follower, everything that he's gained. It's amazing that a younger generation of people have him to lead the way and avoid all the skincare mistakes that we used to make as teenagers because, oh my God, if I had a Hiram, I mentioned this in the, earlier in the video, but if I had a Hiram back then, I think my skincare story would have been completely different to what it was. As I said in my Susan Yara reaction when she made it on Harper's Bazaar that when someone from the skincare community achieves something like this, it's a win for everyone. I feel like I was speaking to Cassandra Bankson literally last night and she mentioned that the skincare community wasn't really a thing a couple of years ago. You know, it's still like a newish kind of community. There's a select few of us and more and more people are joining it and it's so good to see all these people with such a nerdy interest in like, in something that's just like everyday, you know, skincare products. And it's amazing to see someone achieve this level of success and popularity just talking about skincare. It's honestly like, it's such a proud, like, I feel, I feel like we've made it. I feel like we've, we've done it, you know? <laughs> and you know, Hiram's just gonna get more and more popular. Let's hope America doesn't ban TikTok. <laughs> Fuck's sake. But yeah, honestly, this is, it, this is just so cool. I'm so happy for Hiram. He deserves all of this. And I'm looking forward to seeing the skincare community expand. I'm looking forward to seeing new creators come in, grow in popularity as well alongside everyone else. And, you know, I hope one day we can all, I don't know, meet in a room and apply our SPF together. <laughs> but that is it from me now, guys. I will see you next time.